So, so the title is actually an ambitious one uh, in terms of leveraging artificial intelligence is straightforward, but preventive health care is the major challenge. And that's really what we are focused at. And the vision is, well, again, legal, it's, you know, hype is always <laughs> an issue. But uh, to really, you know, set up new paradigms and preventive diagnosis by developing new technology platforms. And, and some of the ideas for this uh, was actually built up during my access to it. But in terms of the disease that we're focusing on is primarily this new age pandemic, uh, this chronic non-communicable diseases, and they have now become collectively the world's biggest killer. Um, worldwide, one in four, depending on which country you're from, it could be one in three, and our seniors have it or at very high risk for it. Um, and in India, as, uh, as uh, you know, so we heard time ago, India is particularly susceptible to uh, these, these kinds of diseases. But largely, when you say chronic non communicable diseases, you talk about diseases like diabetes, heart disease, kidney disease, uh, liver disease, cancers, and so on. And, and uh, it's spreading rapidly around the globe, and particularly more so in India. And I think this is really a telling statistics that because these were all earlier middle age diseases, and now they're creeping into the younger population, and largely because of the imbalance of diet and lifestyle, as we mentioned earlier. So almost 25% of uh, you know, youngsters below 25 today are already diabetic. Uh, and so it's, it's a huge healthcare burden. And the idea is, can we actually, and the problem is, you know, what most of these diseases are developing you over years, if not decades. Right? They're very slow developing diseases, they progress very slowly. And, and in all cases, most of the developmental stage is asymptomatic. You don't know you're developing a disease until it, it establishes a full blown disease. That's one of the problems. And now we know that many of these actually may be, it's, the risks may be instituted even during, because of childhood behavior, for instance. Um, and none of these diseases actually have a cure. The medication that we have currently only can manage the disease. But at the same time, what we know is in most of these, again, as Dr. Kumar mentioned, uh, most of these actually are driven by modifiable risk factors. So if you know early enough that you're on the path to get under the disease, uh, you could in most cases, including in many cancers, modify lifestyle, modify behaviors, or take at least preventive measures to, uh, to not get the disease. And broadly, I'll come to, you know, our, our approach is based on, again, some certain concepts we have earlier, is integrating this field of metagenomics with AI or machine learning um, to extract signatures and actually specify uh, trajectories of, uh, you know, deteriorating health states. And I'll come back to that in a little while. But one of the realities, okay, so AI and why AI, I think it's self-evident. Uh, I think the important point is to remember is all of these chronic diseases, uh, non-communicable diseases, are slow progressors. They do not follow the linear kinds of uh, trajectories when they develop. So the kind of normal linear regression methods and all will not work. So we need non-linear kind of paradigms to analyze, and that's where tools such as AI or machine learning come into play. Um, and of course, you know, the other advantage, of course, is these algorithms learn features as you go along and therefore can continue to keep providing you more depth and more insight as you go along and so on. And they can improve precision on their own, particularly machine learning based tools. And, and that's pretty good. And again, today the goal is because the, because of healthcare costs, the impact on quality of life, and the fact that it's going to be lifelong. I mean, if you have diabetes, you have it for the rest of your life. And that's true for any of these diseases. The major focus now is can you get ahead of the disease curve. And, and uh, for that, you need efficient ways of either predicting risk or at least identifying very early stages of disease development. And remember, as I said, these are all subclinical asymptomatic phases. So any way you can get to identify them early on is, is a huge benefit for um, in public health. Okay, so um, okay, so one of the hard facts when you set up a startup is you start the mission, you start with energy and enthusiasm, but then you realize very quickly that you need funds to take it ahead, and at that stage you run into the chicken and egg problem because you need funds from an investor to develop technologies, but in the absence of any technology, no investor looks at you with any any degree of credibility, so you get caught in the chicken and egg loop, 
So, the, so what we thought is we have all the limited funds we have available, can we at least start with relatively low hanging fruit that doesn't cost much, establish a credibility and perhaps even serve the public and the use. So in that context in the last year we basically developed a product portfolio of uh, these three products and this is currently out of the started we will see marketing this. Uh, this is basically an innovative AI-based health app, mobile health app. Um, that okay, this is again a marketing pitch. I'll come to what it actually means. Uh, we also have developed a multimedia risk algorithm for cardiometabolic diseases, and this is a new that I won't talk about this, but this is also particularly interesting. So okay, so what what is health option? It's basically a mobile health app, and it's basically the claim it's a user friendly solution. And what it does is it uses AI to you know basically capture your personal profile predict your risk for three chronic, uh, three uh, uh, non-communicable diseases, primarily type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and chronic kidney disease. Um, and not only that, it actually starts, helps you to manage these diseases, right? So it kind of personalizes, it sort of identifies what your risk profile is, and we used to incorporate a new parameter which is called metabolic health index. Um, and the reason for that is that's really the key to good health. It's not a six pack or an eight pack body, but really how good your metabolic health is. Uh, that is what defines not only your susceptibility to chronic disease, including some cancers, it also defines your rate of aging. Because an emerging concept that's going to become bigger as we go along is the notion of biological age. How varied, how, varied, uh, how much at variance is your biological age as opposed to your chronological age. And your biological age really depends on uh, your overall metabolic health, which depends on oxidative stress and other things. Right? So basically, like that, it takes a snapshot of uh, what your uh, body physiology is, and, and then uh, it tells you what your risk is, and then it also attempts to customize a health management plan for you. And it will also handhold by monitoring how well or poorly you're implementing that plan. And so essentially, it works as a health app plus a personalized coach. And a lot of these are actually again based on certain background algorithms that we are using. So in a sense, it uses, a, okay, this is again, pitch again, apologies. So basically it balances health against lifestyle processes and it actually promotes a digital approach to health and wellness. Uh, what does it do? It captures the personal profile, like I said, calibrates for ethnicity, and this is something we have done, although it is currently only launched in India and it will stay there for a while. But essentially, we've calibrated based on prevalence across the world. Uh, we can cover about 130 uh, countries with um, calculating uh, ethnicity based predict uh, risk prediction and so on. So, what it does is produces the risk score for these three diseases, what your risk levels are, and also captures your metabolic health. Right? And then, what it says is okay, this is what your metabolic health is, this is what your risk score is, and it gives you options. Is, improving your, let's say, your metabolic health and which conversely also means reducing your disease specific risk and it gives you options of, as to what is the level that you want to achieve and what is the time period over which you want to do. Because sometimes the threshold may be too high or maybe too, too stressful. And once you have set those parameters, what it does, it gives you recommendations. One is on diet, the other is on the lifestyle and the third is physical activity. So diet, so what it does is it actually, so as Dr. Kumar said, you know, so the problem is the level of physical activity. But in reality, what some clinical trials have shown, it's really the balance between diet and physical activity uh, that is critical. So uh, uh, some degree of calorie restriction followed, uh, coupled with certain uh, increases in the level of physical activity is, is what the optimum solution is for a long term benefit. I can diet and reduce uh, my parameters, but the moment I stop dieting, I regain it. And the most stable um, way of approaching the problem seems to be adequately balanced. Again, that's what again that I have with That's it. For each individual, based on the parameters, it calculates what the reduction in diet should be in terms of calorie consumption per day, and also what the appropriate increase in physical activity level should be. Um, 
So currently we have recommendations in terms of what a candy should be, what a distribution should be across your various meals and breakfast, lunch and so on. And what we are now creating in the meanwhile uh, is a complete database of Indian foods with candy. So now you can actually plan because uh, what you want to eat for let's say over a week, plan your breakfast, lunch and so on. And it does it will not allow you. So we've generated the making the app to our database. So it will not allow you to cross this category count. So you actually can uh, choose what you want to do this for our other those other Life Lifestyle is another important part, uh, component that is not being uh, as appreciated ought to be. Is lifestyle needs to be aligned with your biological work. Right? And because that rhythm is again something that is adapted over our thousand years and, and a misalignment and that also defines what how you work calories during the course of the day and, and things like the sleep uh, cycles and so on. So that's another thing that it advises you. And finally it also tells you what it does is it calculates based on your current profile, it estimates <coughs> what your level of physical activity would have been in the past few months and based on that it recalibrates what your level of activity you should do. And it <coughs> allows you to track your physical activity on a daily basis. More importantly, it also allows you to track, based on the goals you have set, how your metabolic health is improving or not improving. Based on. So actually, for instance, this is an example of a very lazy time, no matter what. So this is basically the goal a person has set for himself for himself in terms of metabolic health, but the activity levels have dropped and the metabolic health is actually getting poorer. And, it always, and so you can actually get a daily score, you can go back and check um, what your activity is going to be, what your metabolic score for the day is, and how that is how that correlates with what your disease score is. And what we did right now, like I said, one is of course now we're integrating with wearable devices that should be done in the month, and link, linking it with our uh, Indian food database so, so for the different meals. Right? So that's one of the products, and uh, like I said, the low cost. We're able to pitch it, and hopefully some uh, developer industry will think you're actually worth investing. Um, the other product, of course, is really an extension of this because what is that is simply a, a physiological profile. Okay, and so it's a, in a sense a coarse grain kind of analysis. But the real more accurate is when you combine it with the results of the blood test and so on. And we now develop this multivariant risk algorithm for these diseases that integrate results from a blood test. So basically, um, actually, Vatka is a Sanskrit word for state of health. Yeah? So that's what we have branded some of these products. So it's basically a software application that analyzes the results of a standard blood chemistry test and that gives you the risk for these diseases. And basically, these are the blood test data that is required. Okay. And, and essentially this algorithm is quite interesting because what it actually borrows from literature and a little bit of uh, uh, innovation or more appropriate yoga as we say in India. Uh, so what we do is we take very reliable models, established models, um, and we have integrated them using a process called, uh, basically we have taken orthogonal models which actually increase the spectrum of parameters that you're looking at and that increases your predictions because this is another standard thing in machine learning is when you actually bring an orthogonal model can apply a process called ensemble learning and that increases your prediction accuracy much much more. Okay. And so that's what we've done and actually I give the kind of five scores for these. It also estimates your heart rate and importantly it identifies what your modifiable risk behaviors are. So you give a you get a direction in terms of what are your risk modifiable risk factors that you can control to improve this. And the interesting is very easy to use, very easy to improve because it's just a software application that you put up on a cloud server and any diagnostic like this needs to feed up feed its data and within a matter of 20 seconds your report comes. Um, so it's very easy to implement and, and we're talking to some Indian diagnostic laboratory. They're interested because it now gives them a differentiator. Rather than just giving results, it gives them adds more value to the customer. So this is something that is ongoing. Um, okay, and this is really in many ways our holy grail. And, and, and the funding that we're seeing, you know, looking for is really to pursue something that is much more ambitious and challenging. And that's something, unfortunately, um, 
they are early things have worked because now we are in the process. And and the idea behind this, as I said, it integrates metronomics uh, with uh, uh, artificial intelligence. And essentially, what is metronomics? So metronomics is the composition of small molecules. I mean, let's say a biological process like blood. In this case, we use blood, right? And the important thing about metronomics is they actually measure biochemical activity in the body. So even if I take say about 65 genes, you could have done that. You can only explain about 7 to 8 percent of diabetes diseases. Similarly, breast cancer, there's a lot of talk of BRCA1, BRCA2, but together they only explain about 10 to 15 percent of diseases. So a lot of it is environmentally driven, and 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 metabolomics actually captures that. This is the end point of protein biochemistry. So it it summarizes the effects of any genetic variability um, and any environmental and other factors and integrates all of them. So when you actually do a metabolome profiling, you are actually capturing the sum total of all contributing factors to a physiological state. So and currently what our focus is on is we want to try to develop an integrated platform that simultaneously detects these four most prominent group of women specific cancers and these are among the top five cancers and obviously and the other thing is if you can get an early detection identified in the very early stages, um, in all cases, um, the survival is excellent. So, so that big, big uh, utility. And since we're standing, this is a team. I just we have the scientific expertise, we have the financial business development, and so on. So that's really the next chapter we're looking to launch into, uh, in the process of launching into, and let's see where it goes. Thank you very much.